Hello, good morning, uh, folks. Welcome today to our session. Um, very glad you guys are here today. Um, again, I just want to make sure I can anybody see all these fashion mm -hmm. on my screen. So what did you say? Can anybody see my screen on this passion? Just want to make sure that we're yes. sharing the right screen. Yes, I can see. Yes, we can see. Awesome. So um, let's get started. So my name is uh, JJ Martina, and I'm one of the assistant directors here at the uh, Indian Recruitment Missions. And today with my colleague, uh, Jacob Mercer. Uh, Jacob, uh, do you want to do some introduction words before we get started? Sure. Yeah, thanks, JJ. So uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. My name's Jacob Mercer. I'm the Assistant Director of International Student and Scholar Services here at the Center for International Studies at St. Cloud State. Um, I advise international students, students with an F-1 visa and a J-1 visa. And uh, what we're going to be talking about today is how to get that visa. JJ, over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Jacob. So, and then uh, just small introduction about me. I'm a former international too, um, from the Caribbean. And I was in your shoes basically eight years ago, um, trying to get a visa, applying for a visa and going through all this process, uh, which, you know, sometimes it can be overwhelming. And that's why here we want to give back to you guys by providing the a little bit of knowledge about what uh, we have experienced, what Jacob has experienced in the past, and provide some tips um, about how to go about your interview. Because sometimes it can be scary, you know, it can be intimidated, but we are here to teach you that it's a very simple interview. You don't have to really um, worry about it as, as long as you have everything and documents in place, basically. So, yeah. And as I might know, if you want to, to put like a, a hands up, um, most of you guys are getting a visa or have a schedule of visa interview already. You can put uh, a hands in the chat or you can put uh, yes in the chat too if you want. So we know, um, you know, which stage are you guys in. All right. Thank you. So um, I would say the first step um, right now, congratulations for being admitted at St. Cloud State. Um, basically, you know, very glad that you guys uh, are a potential student coming here um, next uh, spring, um, basically. So um, right here, this is the process, usually um, typically how it goes, um, very easy. Um, of course, you have to get an I-20 from us um, after you submit all your documents um, into our application. And then after you receive your I-20, that's when the fund process starts. So um, here you can see, you know, you have to pay the CVS fee. Most of you guys what I've seen, um, you are in the stat stage as you pay your CVS fee already, right? If you wanna. Yes. Right? <clears throat> and if you have yes, any sir. questions on that too, we can give more explanation about that. <clears throat> so as you know, the CVS fee is about $350 that you have to pay, the I-901, basically, with that form. Um, once you pay the CVS fee, then you can go uh, on the website and apply for your visa, specifically. The visa application fee is $160, too. So those are the those I would say you have to keep um, in your budget, uh, specifically when you're looking, uh, applying for a visa. And then, basically, when you... Uh, done that, you can schedule an appointment at the nearest U.S. Embassy or consulate that issues visa. So you can go at travelstate.gov that we will put at the end of this uh, presentation, and you will be able to uh, schedule um, a visa interview with the nearest embassies. Usually students, you know, it depends how it is in your country. I know we had some uh, students that comes from like Africa that some uh, visas are pretty full. Uh, appointments are very full, so they might go to the nearest embassies. I know students have gone to, like Nigeria, have gone to um, Ghana, have gone to Ivory Coast, uh, if they're not from there, because they have more appointments. So you have to see which one is better for you. And then uh, basically, um, upon receipt of an F1 or G1 visa, enter the US no more than 30 days prior to your I-20 or DS-2019 start date. So after your visa got approved, 
um, you are allowed to enter the United States 30 days before uh, classes start, which classes were start this year on January 9th, basically. So, yeah. Jacob, is that right? <clears throat> yeah, that, that's right. I mean, actually, technically, it's uh, 30 days before the program start date on your yeah. I-20 or DS-2019. Yeah, I and I think what we're trying to do, because I know all of you, if you have an I-20, it was probably issued by Leslie in our International Admissions Office. And you'll see there on your I-20, the program start date. And I know Leslie always tries to make that start date uh, correspond with not the start of classes, but with the start of uh, new international student orientation. Yeah, which so I the believe, start date yeah. this year will be um, January 5th. Yep, yep, that's right. That's so right. You and are allowed one, to enter the country 30 days um, prior to that, basically. So yeah. absolutely. So yeah, yeah. Not. And then for the CVIS fee, yeah, 350, that's right for F1. I don't know if there's any J1 students in here, but for J1, it's a little cheaper. It's $220. Okay. So just for you guys to know if there's a J1 student sitting here. So yeah. Any questions or concerns? based on this slide. This is just uh, the uh, simple steps um, to get to your visa. And then we're gonna go more in depth about your visa interview itself. So when you start, um, when you schedule the visa interview, what will, what will it look like? What questions they might ask you, how you should behave and uh, basically the basic information for that. So once you schedule your visa, um, you gotta have some documentation. So when you have, uh, when you go on the um, travel.state.gov, you can find specifically documentation that you have to bring um, upon your visa interview. Um, here you can see we put the most important ones that you have to bring. Uh, as you can see, mostly you have to bring your passport. You know, passport it must be valid for travel to United States. Um, your passport cannot be expired at all because your visa will be denied with an expired passport. Um, <clears throat> and then also, once you fill out that DS-160 confirmation page, you have to bring that too to your visa interview. So make sure you have um, mostly those two um, <clears throat> forms when you go to your visa interview. Um, Form I-20 from your school, of course, you know, you have to bring your I-20 that you receive from your designated school official, which is uh, lastly here. So you have to bring that I-20 um, for you to show to the officer. Um, and then also the uh, application fee payment received. So when you pay for a DS-160, you will receive um, a receipt. So you print it out and then you can bring that too to the window um, at the visa interview. So make sure you have that. And then a photo, usually when you fill out the DS-160, they will ask you for a black or white background photo of you. Uh, make sure um, if you could not do that at a DS-160, you have to bring uh, two uh, photos to that with white background, uh, basically. So yeah, Jacob, anything to add to that? Any specific documents else? No, no that, all, that all looks accurate to me. So... So make sure you guys, you have all these documents. Um, you know, this um, session is recorded too. So we will send it to you guys after um, if you miss anything. Um, if you're writing down notes, um, let, let us know too. So these are the specific documents you have to bring um, when you have your visa interview. Um, they make sure you're at least 15 to, uh, you know, 30 minutes early. You make sure you're not late at all. Um, that's very important. Um, and make sure you have all your documents. Check your documents, you know, before you go in so you know you're accurate on these documents. And like I said, on the travel.state.gov, you can find all these documents too that you have to bring and they keep reminding you about it. So, yeah. So now we're going to get to the part. Let's say, let's put a scenario here. You are at the embassy, U.S. embassy, and then you are your turn is to go talk to the visa officer. So you are in that space right now. So um, usually they, they ask you, you know, why you wanna come to the United States? What's your purpose? Um, these are just some tips that we can give you guys. Uh, mostly you never say that you uh, wanna come and work in the United States. And no, you always have to state you must be able to show that you have reasons for returning to your home country that are stronger than those for remaining in the United States. So you have to show that, hey, I want to study 
uh, for example, engineering, because I want, my, I want to go back and help my country in like building um, stuff in the country. So different, I would say, um, motives and also reasons, you know, to go back um, to your country. J Jacob, anything you want to add to that part? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd say that just keep in mind when you go into your visa interview that you're uh, interviewing for a student visa. And so just uh, be sure to remember talk uh, to talk about your interest in being a student here in the US, specifically here at St. Cloud State University. I think it's always a really good idea to uh, do a little research about St. Cloud State University, uh, have some very clear ideas about why you are interested in this institution in particular, and even about whatever major you're going to go into when you start your studies here. Just why do you want to be an engineer or why do you want to study computer science or why do you want to study um, whatever it is, education or English language and literature or criminal justice or whatever your major happens to be. Uh, we have a really comprehensive website and that would be a really good resource for you, I think. Uh, before you even go into your interview, take a look at um, the website for the particular program of study that you're going to be going into. For example, um, you know, computer science, there's all the list of the faculty members and their specializations and uh, just details about the program in particular. Just uh, so it'd be really useful, I think, just to go into your interview um, with some information about your program, about this university. And again, some reasons about uh, why you chose St. Cloud State in particular. And like JJ said, absolutely. Uh, plans for after you earn the degree here, returning to your home country, and what are you going to do? I mean, I know you don't have your degree yet, and you haven't even started here at St. Cloud State, but the consular officer is going to want to know that after you finish, you do in fact plan on going back. And even if you don't know for sure, um, just have a have some kind of idea about what kind of employment you might get in your home country when you go back. Um, a really good thing about you know, being a student at St. Cloud State are employment opportunities here uh, on campus and off campus like CPT, OPT, STEM extension. I know some students are interested in H-1B, but also like JJ said, um, I would not recommend talking about CPT and OPT. The consular officer is not interested in the kind of employment you want to do. Uh, they're interested in, in, again, the studies that you want to undertake while you're here as a student and how you are going to use the degree back home. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jacob. So those are guys, these are just a really good tips. You know, if you want to write those down, um, specifically about um when you're talking, when you are doing an interview. Um, one important aspect too is the language. Make um you have to make sure that you know this is will be conducted in English. I know not all of you, your English uh will be um is the hundred percent, but you know, practice a little bit before you go, um, do some you know, practice in the mirror, have more confidence because when you look into yourself in the mirror, it will come easier, uh, basically. So then you have more confidence to basically come uh, in front of the officer. And then also speak for yourself. You are con you are basically being interviewed. You don't have to bring any parents or family members, you know, to the interview. They The officers don't need any of them. They just need you in front of the window um, asking you questions. So very important is just you that have to go there. No matter who's the, your sponsor or anything, you have to be in front uh, of the window there. Right here. And then basically, like uh, Jacob co covers to know the program and how it fits your career plans. Um, you might ask, usually the questions are very simple. They don't want to uh, waste too much time. We did not want to ask a lot of questions, but most of the time this question comes uh, forward, you know, know the program and how it fits your career plans. So you should be able to explain how studying in the United States relates to your future professional career when you return home. So let's say you have some idea what you want to um, major here at St. Cloud State. And, you know, you want to say, hey, I want to become in here because I can help so-and-so uh, back home. So always have an idea, you know, what specifically, why are you majoring um, in this, why are you going into this major, what, how it will benefit you and what you think about it career-wise. Very, very important aspect um, of your interview. 
and also to uh, be brief, keep your answers to the officer's questions short and to the point. You know, um, you can add to your questions, which you will see in a video, but don't um, do anything extra. Just answer the questions, you know, that um, you got asked, you know, basically. So anything you want to add to that, I mean, Jacob, be brief, because sometimes this can be confusion. Sure. I mean, I, I guess it's just good to know that um, your visa interview is going to be pretty short, right, JJ? Five yeah. minutes, 10 minutes, it's not going to last all that long. So no. you're going to have a limited amount of time to talk to that person. So just keeping that in mind, um, keep your keep your answers as, as short as you can. Uh, just answer the questions to the best of your ability and just kind of move forward. Yeah. And uh, basically, like Jacob mentioned too, the employment part is very important. You know, you don't mention, you know, there's a lot, I know there's so many opportunities in the United States uh, to stay or to do internship while you are doing your studies, um, like the CPT and the OPT. But you are engaging that, hey, when I finish my degree here, I'm going back home and serving my country. So that's why your main purpose in, in coming to the United States should be to study, not for chance to work before or after graduation. So that's why keep uh, saying that you want to go back and help your country. So because um, if not, it, your visa will be denied. And then in the worst case scenario, um, even let's say the officer tells you, hey, um, you know, so sorry, but your visa has been denied. Always keep a positive attitude, you know, because you have the opportunity to reapply and um, basically go back for a second term. And then let's say, let's put it this way. If you find the same officer, you know, and you kept a good attitude, it might be able to grant you your visa your second time. So um, always keep a positive attitude even though if you heard that your visa been denied, because there's always second chances, three chances that you can um, reapply for a visa. And then this is a small tutorial video. Uh, I want you guys to see this is from an um, a ex-officer who worked in one of the embassies, and he had some knowledge based on the interviews that he has conducted. So I'm going to share my sound here. And then let's hear this video. Hi everybody, today I would like to talk to you about being an active interviewee. Now what does that mean exactly? I talk about this a lot to my clients, about being an active interviewee. And it's a concept that not a lot of people have thought about when they think about going to their visa interview. The majority of visa applicants think about going into their visa interview as a passive process. They go in, expecting to be asked questions by the visa officer, and then they're going to give the answers to the best of their knowledge or to the best of their preparation, and then the visa officer is going to make a decision. People unrealistically expect that the visa officer is very invested in their personal visa application. They think that the visa officer cares as much about their visa application as they do, but that's just simply not the case. The visa officers are doing 100, sometimes even 200 of these visa interviews per day. And their primary concern is making a decision as quickly as possible and moving on. They're not gonna ask you a lot of questions, especially if you don't give them a reason to ask. So some people go in and very unfortunately, the visa officer asks one question, two questions, and then they refuse them. Now, why might that happen? Well, maybe those questions weren't the questions that you wanted them to ask. Maybe you wanted them to ask about your parents' business, but they never did. They just asked if you took a loan out, right? Now, to be an active interviewee, an active interviewee means that what you're going to do is you're going to lead that conversation from the interviewee side, right? The interviewer has to ask the questions, but as the interviewee, you can give whatever answers you want. You can give as much information as you want or as little information, right? You can give as much context as you want or as little context. So what I tell my clients to do is to listen to the question that's being asked by the interviewer, or the visa officer, listen to their question. But then when you give your answer, make sure you're giving them the information that you know that you want to give them, the information that you know that they need that they don't have yet. 
they've asked you a question, they've stopped talking, and they've given you an opportunity to speak. So now it's, now it's your turn. It's your turn to convince them, to put that information out there so that they can have the best information possible when they're making that decision about your visa, right? Let me give you an example. When the visa officer asks you, let's say you're a student, right? The visa officer asks you, well, what do your parents do? Well, some visa applicants may just say business. This doesn't tell the visa officer anything, right? Business could be anything. It could be anything from selling uh, eggs on the street to owning the, the country's largest petroleum company, right? So saying that your, your parents do business doesn't really tell the visa officer anything about you. They don't see you in a new light, right? They don't understand your situation any more fully. That's a passive answer, right? Now, an active answer, being an active interviewee, what does that sound like? Well, it sounds something more like this. What do your parents do? My father owns a business. It's actually a factory and he has over three dozen employees. Uh, he's owned this factory since the 1990s. He was the original founder of the business. Uh, on top of that, our family owns three apartment buildings in the city. Uh, we live in one of them and we rent out uh, the others uh, that we get another amount of income. That apartment building is worth X amount of dollars. Uh, on top of that, my older brother, uh, after graduating, started an engineering firm and he's doing uh, design and due diligence on infrastructure projects for the government, right? Okay, so that was just completely made up. However, you get what I'm saying there. What you do is you think, okay, the visa officer has asked me this question. What do they really want to know? The visa officer asked me, what do my parents do? Well, it's not because he needs to, you know, check a box and say, I know what this person's parents do. It's because he's trying to see what, what, what's the situation that I'm in here in my own country? What's the situation that my family's in, right? How stable are we? What's our, what, are what are our financial prospects, right? So when I hear that, what do your parents do, that question, I know what I need to tell him or her on the other side of that window. I need to tell them about what my family's finances are like. Now, maybe that has to do with my parents' jobs. Maybe it has to do with my parents' investments. Right? Maybe it has to do with my grandparents, if they're still the, the primary, you know, the patriarch of the family that owns the business. There's some information that they're wanting, and you need to figure out what that is and give that to them. Be an active visa applicant. All right, so that was just a small tutorial um, for you guys to start thinking about how you should talk. And um, basically, that's person who has been sitting in, in front, basically behind that window for a while. And it's telling his experiences to you guys so you know uh, what specifically you have to do. And then this part, you know, is the one that really we don't, you know, really like. But it can happen. That's why we have to talk about it. Um, you know, your visa can be denied at an interview. It's something that happens uh, not commonly, but, you know, it can happen. That's why we have to talk about it. Um, <clears throat> basically, the visa denied saying here, an application may be denied because the consular officer does not have all the information required to determine if the applicant is eligible to receive a visa because the applicant does not qualify for the visa category for which he or she applied. So that's why that tutorial video basically correlates with what this description is saying because if you are answering very brief questions and you're not really um, going in depth and be uh, more specific, the counselor will not know what specifically um, we are you applying for this visa and what the, are what is your situation. So be very specific when you're answering our questions. Um, basically, when they ask you anything you want to add on this, uh, Jacob, when your visa get denied, why your visa can get denied. Right. I think one of the main reasons that applicants find for visa denial is it's kind of a vague reason that they receive from the consular officer. And it's that uh, the student hasn't proven strong enough ties to their home country in order to be allowed an F1 or a J1 visa, which, again, is is kind of a vague um, statement. But um, 
I would if your visa is denied and you're going back for a second visa interview. Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend doing the exact same thing that you did for the first interview and expecting the outcome to be different for a second time. I'd say just maybe um, if your visa is denied and you go back a second time or even a third time, um, maybe do a little bit more research um, into the program like we were talking about. Uh, be like uh, the video we just saw try to be a more active interviewee, um, try to present as much information, supporting information about yourself to convince the visa officer that, yes, in fact, you do have strong ties to your home country, that you're not uh, planning on immigrating to the U.S., you just want this visa to go to the U.S. and study, and that you are planning on returning uh, to your home country and uh, using the visa for something um, specific and something concrete, um, and and that should that should do it. I mean, e even gathering more documentation if you if you need to, but again, um, just making sure that you take the time to think about how the interview went and ways that you could maybe improve things and to try things a little bit differently the second time around. Thanks, Jacob. And then also, as we have put here on the slide, um, you know, websites that you can go that give you more uh, information uh, about, you know, when your visa get denied, what's the next steps you have to do, uh, how you can reschedule a date for a second time. I basically usually it's the same that you have to, you know, schedule another date when it's available. Um, so that's why um, as soon as you get an I-20, schedule a visa. So let's say if your visa get denied, you can still go for a second one before the semester starts. So that's very important too. So as soon, let's say if your visa get denied, it can happen. You know, don't be, um, you know, don't get really sad about it. Just keep trying and reschedule a visa so you can get, um, you know, sometimes students get it at the second time. You never know. So, you know, be more optimistic about it, I would say so, yeah. And then also we have put here um, additional resources. Um, you know, sometimes um, a co an officer can ask you about the state that you're going into. Here are additional resources that you can explore more about Minnesota State, what the state has to offer for you. Um, basically to study in it why you want to study in minnesota you know some of these questions might come so you know these are resources that you can you can start looking into the minnesota state too uh, specifically and then also if you're looking more of the generic way education you see it's a great resource to find more information about living in the united states uh, specifically um, because you know the officer might ask you about some things that happen in the united states the current situation you need to know what specific United States is about, the culture. Those are important aspects to know when you're interviewing too. And then also U.S. Department of State, uh, find more specific information about U.S. embassies in your country. You know, if you're looking for uh, dates, where they are located, um, how the process goes, this website too is a great, uh, um, I would say, resource for you too, um, to look into that when you're scheduling U.S. embassies, let's say, you see U.S. Embassy is full um, with appointments. You can try to see which ones um, have other availability. So there's so, so many different ways um, that not only that you can go in your country, but you can actually go in a different country too and do um, a visa interview. And then um, for visa interview information in general, you like uh, I've been mentioning in the presentation, you can go to travel.state.gov and you can find from A.Z. Uh, specifically information about visa interview that you need to know. Um, this is just a, a small session that we did. We want to encourage you and teach you how you have to, um, you know, conduct these interviews, um, how confident and uh, you have to be in front of the officer because, you know, you say your career is at stake, you know, you're trying to change uh, your course of the future. So we want to help you um, do that basically. So, yeah. And then uh, you can follow us. We can go to uh, questions answer if you have any questions or concern based on the information that we said today. Let me see if there's any question in the chat. Okay, we have a okay. We have Sarah, my F1 visa appointment scheduled for tomorrow. So this is perfect, uh, Sarah. You know. You know what you have to do, be active, um, basically answer 
that you can you know answer the questions that they ask you. Uh, we have a schedule for visa appointments since August, but I have for appointment here from Council in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, Motoyesi, you can try, um, yeah, Michael Motoyesi, you can try see if at other countries too, um, beside um, Nigeria, that you can try other countries too. So it's not only Nigeria, you can see if you can fly to a close country in Africa and we, you can get a visa there. Um, sorry, first let me, I think. Okay, we have somebody here, Jacob, my first time visa reject, I take an appointment. Is there any tips for me? So a person who's going for a second time, Jacob, do you think anything for the second time? Yeah, like I said before, um, just um, if you did receive an answer for why your visa was rejected, take that into uh, account going in for the second time. But like the video said, trying to be a more active interviewee, kind of directing the conversation in ways that support you in your case, giving context um, in, certain, in certain ways that make clear that you do have strong ties to your home country and you are planning on returning after uh, you graduate from St. Cloud State. And if you can, just express uh, explaining why you chose St. Cloud State in your program. If you didn't do that before, um, then definitely the second time around, make sure uh, to kind of focus on those things. That should help. Yeah, and another question we have here, um, good morning, I believe is from uh, Abiola Oyewole. Uh, good morning, thank you for the section. What do we do when we get denied for lack of funding by visa officers? Um, um, I would say Abiola, um, try to see if you can get more sponsors, um, you know, if you can get more people to sponsor you so you can have Let's say if the school is asking for, like for, for example, St. Cloud is actually asking for like 26,000. Maybe if you can put, if you can try 30,000. So as more as you have, the better. The better. So, you know, I'll, an advice I have for you, try to see if you can find more sponsors, you know, that can increase that amount that you have right now. Yeah, I'd sure. say also, um, if, if you can, just bringing up, uh, how you are going to be getting the ACSS scholarship here at St. Cloud State, like all new and coming F1 students, how um, affordable it is to study and live in Minnesota, especially compared to other areas in the U.S. It's um, We have a very affordable university and St. Cloud is an affordable place to live. So maybe bringing that up might help if possible. But yeah, like JJ said, additional sponsors, or even if the problem initially was with, um, they couldn't quite verify, given the information that you brought with you to the visa interview, that you were uh, sponsored enough, or that the sponsorship you had was legitimate, um, bring, um, you know, bank statements, bring letters, any kind of supporting information that you can uh, to kind of um, bolster the your uh, financial stability and uh, your ability to prove it. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, we have a question here. I don't know if you can answer. My F1 visa was also refused on the 214B on October 7. Any tips to what to change in my application on DS-160? Any tips you can get on that, Jacob? On You know, nothing nothing other than what we've covered uh, so far. Yeah, uh, so. Uh, hello, uh, so, I'm audible, sorry. I just want to ask one thing related to this question. This was my question. Uh, hello, I'm Burhan. Uh, first of all, thank you so much uh, for this presentation. It was really helpful. I just wanted to ask that currently my brother uh, is studying in the St. Cloud University. Uh -huh. uh, so in my last interview, uh, I mentioned uh, that one of my reasons for going to St. Cloud was uh, that my brother recommended me uh, this program. Uh, it's, it is aligned to what I've been uh, doing in my job for the last two years. But I mentioned in my interview that my brother is studying over there right now. So uh, I think that probably that was the reason for my rejection. But I wanted to know that should I mention my brother is studying in the same university in the US right now, or uh, I should not mention that? That's a great um, um question so i would say no don't mention your brother um just mention talk more about the institution itself 
you, you know what I mean, um, Burihan Munin, you know, talk more about institution and then the program, why is the program good? Instead of just talking about relatives because they will be taking, oh, I'm going here because, you know, family is there. It just, you know, talk more about the institution because you are interested not in your relatives, but in the studies that you want to do at the United States. I mean, if you are asked about your brother, don't lie. Right. I mean, if you asked a direct question, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring the conversation to no, the, any no, relatives you have. Yeah. No. Mm -mm. yeah. All right. Uh, perfect. Thank you. Just, just one more question uh, regarding this. So, uh, in my last interview, I, I shown myself as my sponsors. Um, so, in the interview, it was asked that who is sponsoring you. So, I said it, it was me. So, uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm planning to reapply in December one more time. And for this time, I have changed my sponsor because I was told that uh, in order to show strong ties to your country, you should make your guardian, your parents, your sponsor. Yeah. So uh, I have been, I have changed it, but I wanted to ask that um, will it be a problem if I'm showing uh, in like a span of one month time, I'm showing myself, uh, my father as a sponsor instead of myself? Yeah, so I will say that's a good idea. If you can have uh, not yourself as a sponsor, that will be better. You know, so they know that you have somebody who can you can rely on um, in your country that uh, sponsor you. Or if you have somebody, you know, maybe in the United States too, like you have to fill out that affidavit support form. But I would say if you have a sponsor, not uh, than yourself, that will be better uh, specifically. So, yeah. And I, and I know your question, too, was, um, is it OK to within a very short time period, switch the sponsorship from yourself to someone else. Um, I don't necessarily see an issue with it. If you are nervous about it, what you could do is add um, a family member as a sponsor uh, to the existing sponsorship, which is you, because if you look at your I-20 the way it is now, it probably you know, breaks down the financial uh, support right? And there's going to have like the scholarship, the ACSS, there's going to have, um, you know, personal funds is going to have like other financial support. Uh, you could have personal funds in, a, in addition to a family member, if you'd like, if that makes you feel more comfortable um, going forward with your visa interview and the kind of uh, funding that you um, plan on providing. Yes, um, we have a couple more questions. Thank you here. so much. Thank you so much. Yep. Um, my US visa was denied last month under Section 214B2. What change am I supposed to take in my reapplication? Um, usually, Polovatife, um, there's no specific on the application. Honestly, the, the officer doesn't look much at the application. It, it all comes to the interview, you know? Um, it's just what you say, what you say, what they want to hear, um, what they're looking at right now in the country, what the country really needs. So. Um, the application doesn't really have much influence on that. Jacob, do you want to add to that specifically? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you, JJ, that um, it, it all comes down to comes down to the interview, not necessarily the uh, application itself. Um, okay, we have somebody who's try again. Yes, so yeah, so yeah, when you try again. Yeah, at this one, Andrew, yeah. Yeah, so my question is that, now my uncle is my sponsor. So Sorry, who's your sponsor? My uncle, my uncle. Uncle, yes. Yeah. Well, I live with my parents, but my uncle sponsors our education and everything. Do you get me? No, can, I you, am... can you repeat that again? I said I, I live with my parents, but my uncle sponsors our education and stuff like that. Do you get me? So if I'm to tell the the interviewer that my my uncle is my sponsor, will she or we really ask that why can't your parents sponsor you since you are living with them? Why no questions like that? Do you so know what Oh, so you're telling us like if you can mention if they ask you why your uncle is sponsoring you, not your parents? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, basically, I mean, you you can just be you know 
realistic and official about it that you know if your uncle is the one who has been sponsoring you and most of the time you know just be realistic about it you can just say your uncle um, basically so yeah anything you can that, Jacob? yeah i mean you can you can explain that you're close to your uncle and yeah. that your um you know uh, uncle does have he has the the funds to support your education uh you know things like that i mean it's not it's not suspicious in any way if your uncle is your financial sponsor no. uh, we see it all the time it could be an uncle it could be grandparents it could be a close family friend even we see all sorts of financial sponsors so i, I wouldn't get too worried about that don't worry about it no yeah i like it. i like again yeah. what you say andrew um if you can have more the amount larger than what we ask you know that we have we ask now of 26 000. If you can have more, the better. That's yeah. mostly yeah. when it comes to sponsoring, basically. So, yeah. Okay. And then yeah, also, thank you. sorry. And then thank you. Thanks for yeah. the yeah. So, mm -hmm. and then uh, a good question. can age be a reason for visa denial? I'm 24 years old, trying to get first degree. Um, you know, I can say yes or no. Um, you know, it depends. And it also depends what type of degree to you coming for, um, basically. So um, usually if visa denials for degree, I will say, or age, it depends. Like if you have a bachelor already and you're trying to get another bachelor, that can be a little sketchy that the counselor uh, might um, think twice, you know, to get into a visa. But age should not be a, a big you know, we have students who are came here with their whole family. They in their thirties, so age actually is, should not be a matter of it. It all depends. Let's say if you have a degree already and you want to come for a bachelor again, that really that will make uh, a big change. You know, in the in the decision making. So yeah, can gap year cause problem? Um, do you want to add to that gap year? I don't believe so. No. Yeah, I don't see a gap year causing any issues. No. Uh -uh. Yes, yeah, some students asking, Mosa, good afternoon, everyone. You said to be short on the point. You were like, no, it's better to develop when they ask you the question, just to answer. Yeah, so you can answer you can answer shortly, but with uh, specific examples. You know, you don't have to tell a whole story. That's what we that's what we mean. Because some pe some people tell a whole story, but you just have to bring examples about a hey, my parents do this and this and this. That's it. But not tell your parents' whole story. That's what we mean with short, uh, basically. So yeah, right. And by by short, we don't mean just a straight yes or no answer necessarily. Yeah. Um, just like the video that that JJ uh, shared with us, um, it's your when is your time to speak is your opportunity to share whatever information uh, you think is going to help support your case and uh, your ties to your home country and your desire to earn a degree at St. Cloud State University. So just try to take the opportunity as um, you know as briefly as you can or as straightforwardly as you can to um, you know support yourself and provide the appropriate context. Um, as we almost get to the end of the session, so I'm gonna ask, answer a couple more questions and then we will do, we will be doing um, other sessions too in um, November, uh, basically. So um, uh, any specific documents to prove strong ties to home country? No, 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 Christian, no one do. There's no specific documents you can bring to that. It's so you have to know examples about your degree that you're coming here, how it ties to your home country, what you want to study. So, yeah. Hello, how are you? Hello, yeah. Yeah, uh, I applied for an MBA, a Santa Cloud. Eh? So yeah. I was accepted. So I'm willing to join uh, in this full-time program come on spring. Yeah? So the question is, uh, how will, uh, if I apply the diversity visa lottery, which is uh, going on, uh, if I apply maybe, so during my interview maybe, for, so now during my F1 interview, will the visa officer able to know that I actually applied for a diversity visa lottery? Because that one is now uh, a red alert. Yeah, um, 
that's a good question. I'm not really sure that they could look that you apply for a visa lottery, but don't mention it at all. Don't mention that. Yeah, all. but will he able to know? Will he able to know that actually without even mentioning it? So uh, once he sees my DS-160, of course, once I, I step uh, into the visa uh, officer's office, uh, the consular office, uh, will he able to know once he's going through my DS-160, will he able to know that I maybe on November or maybe on October, I, I actually applied for a, uh, for, for a diversity visa lottery. So, and that one is a, a, an immigrant visa, which you, want, which, which, which you knew, which you know as well. So how will it affect, or, or, or just give me an advice on that. You know, I believe that he might be able to know because um, it is a part of the S-160 for that visa, but that one, I'm not really sure. That's a good question. Jacob, anything you think about it? I believe that they might be able to know about it. Yeah, they, they have they, they have access to that information. Yeah, they can yeah if they want to, yeah. They have to access, and they might yeah. even ask you, you know, you know, these they might even ask you, did you apply for a diversity visa lottery? Just for their curiosity, just the way they want to see it. Right. You know, and, so they and just if they ask, ask you, you like, if they ask you, don't lie. Just be yeah, uh, be just, yeah, just it. be truthful. Don't yeah. say hey, apply for this too. So you know, but if you, know, you don't ask, free, you don't mention a, it. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll just tell them maybe since this is a free, you know, uh, program. So I just apply it. So but it won't have any effect on my on my program on what I'm undergoing as well. Right, okay. right. I mean, if if it does come up, like like you said, um. Uh, you, you could talk about how it was uh, you just decided to apply for it to apply for it and see what happens but what your primary goal is is to you know get a degree in the u.s at st cloud state and you want to be a student and this is what you want to do as a student i'd say just kind of redirect the conversation to uh studying and getting that degree here no actually yeah that's why and, and i was accepted for an mba actually i'll be undergoing with an mba at st cloud that is the graduate right. school of business. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, thank you. All right, guys. I think it's uh, it's time. We, the session was a very brief, uh, fifty minutes uh, session. Like I said, we will do be doing other sessions. If you have other questions, you can email me or Jacob uh, specifically too. Um, you put my email in the chat. You have received my email. And if you have a specific question, you can send this to us. Um, Jacob, if you want, you can put your email too in the chat um, so um, students can get that. Hopefully this session was, uh, you know, informational for you guys, um, educational that you learn a little bit more about what it looks like when you go out there and sure. um, do a visa interview. Um, yes. Definitely, if you have more questions, reach out to us. And for the ones who are doing visa interview soon, uh, good luck. and you know, be confident in yourself. So, yeah. Any other questions, any other uh, suggestion you have, Jacob, before we close our session? No, I just want to thank everyone for uh, attending the session today. I hope you did find it useful. And um, as you move forward into your visa interviews, like uh, JJ said, just be be optimistic, be confident. We're uh, we're optimistic too that you're going to get those visas, and we're really looking forward to seeing you in person here on campus very yeah. soon. Thank you very much, sir, for taking your time and sharing this vital information. I really, I really appreciate you, sir. Thank of course, you. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.